those last three laps can you see my hand i'm i'm still shaking it's been like three hours hi everyone it's kira and welcome back to my channel i hope you are all well so today is my tail end race review for the british grand prix and wow like three quarters away through that race i was like oh this tail review is gonna be good like it's gonna be quite easy straightforward not much has happened <laughs> but then the pirelli tires just decided to blow up so i'm gonna be talking you through my key moments of the race and also my predictions and whether i got them right because in my last tail review i basically every tail review i will give you my predictions for the next race and the next race and the next race so we'll see whether i got any of them right so before i get into this video if you do enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below but yeah let's just get started the first thing i'm gonna be talking about is the retirement we had three and the saddest one right I don't even I don't even know if I could even comprehend it it was Nico Hulkenberg as we know Nico was having this amazing comeback to Formula One he was in place of Sergio Perez because we know that he has sadly tested positive for coronavirus and he has to sit out I think he'll be out for the next race as well um but oh, it was going to be such a comeback, wasn't it? Nico Hulkenberg coming in. He'd done really well, you know, throughout... Qual well, he didn't do amazing throughout qualifying, but the practice sessions to get up to speed in that car. Like, he hasn't been training for the last seven months to, ru to drive a Formula 1 car. He has literally been winding down, like, to have a year off. So for him to get back in was really really good but yeah unfortunately racing point did have an issue with the car it was the engine actually the engine just didn't fire up and it see it had like it had like a seizure i think that's what they, that they would kind of call it in you know mechanical terms the engine had a seizure and he didn't eventually get out now the next requirement was kevin magnuson and this was with alex albon going through club now the more i watch it the more i think on um, yeah maybe kevin could have le left a little bit more room but i think the uh the five second penalty for alex was all right it kind of made sense um it's kind of fair because it was a massive accident with kevin but yeah kevin's obviously you know take trying to take the corner but at the same time he did go wide so alex saw a gap alex went to the gap then tried to back out the gap but then by then the wheels clipped and it was too late so that was the second retirement and that was quite scary it was a big hit going around club everything seems to happen at club corner can i just say like club corner seems to be the place because last year we had a lot we had antonio go off at club corner and we also had the sebastian and the max moment last year at club corner so club corner it seemed to be a very good place for issues so the other retirement of the race and the final one was the scariest one and that was danny caveat um we just go to this yellow flag and then all of a sudden there's just this puff of smoke and dust and gravel in your face and then you see this alpha towery in the wall with the the rear wing is off the two front wheels are off the nose is gone the wing front wing is gone and i'm thinking oh my gosh like is he okay it was a massive accident you just don't know whether these people are going to be okay or not and martin brundle rightly said straight away i think his tire deflated before he got to that curb because there was no way it was going to do that and he was right i think when when you watch the video once he loses it on the curb the I think it's the right left I want to say the right left is completely disintegrated already like what was going on with these Pirelli tires but luckily Danny was able to get out of the car and he was fine um <laughs> he whacked the cameraman I thought you know he's just gonna walk past the cameraman it's fine and then right at the last minute he saw it and he's like and just whacked him out of the way but I mean he's gonna be angry I get it he's gonna be angry it's a massive thing but I'm 99% sure that tire was deflated and it was kind of not Danny's fault I don't know whether it was driver error in the sense that he placed this car where you shouldn't have done maybe too far onto that curb or too far i'm not really sure but unfortunately that was our third and final retirement but then you know the race just carried on so next i'm going to move on to my key moments and the first one is roman grosjean and his um car movements under braking shall we say so after kvyat had his accident everybody boxed for hard tires apart from roma grosjean has might as well done a different strategy just to see how it's going to work because there's no point in just being at the back but as we know, these cars are going to come through and they're going to overtake Grosjean. We know that. First, it was Carlos Sainz and Roman Grosjean just kept moving on to braking. And the first time I was like, watch yourself. That's, it's very close, especially how far she'll go in down Hanger Straight into Stowe. Like, it's very, very fast down there. But he got the black and white flag, which I thought, no, that's fine. Like, that's fair enough. That probably should have happened. But then when he'd done it again to Daniel Ricciardo, um, after he'd had that black and white flag, I'm thinking, no, like, that is taking it too far. Like, I think you need a penalty or something like that. Like, you just shouldn't be doing that. So, Roman Grosjean gave us a little bit of entertainment in the middle of the race while we didn't have too much going on. I was kind of sitting there thinking, is anything going to happen? Like, it's normally Silverstone's quite good. But then I thought, actually, most years I am at Silverstone. So maybe just because I'm there, I don't realise that it's not actually a good race. But I think it is, right? It definitely is. Okay, and now, oh, I don't know how to say this. Now, now we're on to, like, what, are we on, like, lap 50? Something like that, lap 49, lap 50. Literally, like, a couple of laps to go. And the, the camera just pans 
to Valtteri Bottas and his front left is this that's all I can describe it it was literally like and it was like what's going on what is what why is your tyre doing that? We know that everyone's having uh, troubles with their tyres. There was a lot of flat spots going on. There was just, the tyres were just degrading so quickly. Like, we know, I didn't expect the tyres to go off like this. I don't think anybody expected, I don't think Pirelli expected the tyres to go off like this. But they did. And obviously with the new movement that Mercedes are supporting with anti-racism and Black Lives Matter, a lot of their kit is all um, black. So the car is black, the gloves are black, whereas Valtteri's would normally be um, blue. The helmet is primarily black as well. So you've got Valtteri Bottas going slow. Bear in mind he was in P2 at this time and you know we're thinking oh my god what is going on and then Crofty shouts oh my god Lewis Hamilton has got it as well and we're all like oh my god what the hell and we're looking for ages and even it got me like normally I, I know from like the T-cam who which driver it is but obviously with that new kind of they're, they're very similar basically and I was like oh my gosh for a minute I was like no 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 I think everybody was like this can't be true and then I think Martin or someone picked up like no that's still Valtteri and we were at this point we're like oh thank god in a way I'd rather it be Valtteri than I would you know be Lewis so Valtteri unfortunately got that puncture literally on the start finish straight so he had to go all the way back round to then pit so then here is where Max Verstappen pits because he thinks oh this is a good shout I'll box now because I've got secured P2 here and you know I will cover myself make sure that my tyres don't do the same thing and to also get fastest lap so we thought that's fine that's absolutely fine next thing you know Carlos Sainz has the same issue I'm looking thinking, what this has literally happened again his front wings dragging on the floor his left tire has gone off as well and I'm literally now sitting here thinking I'm really worried for Lewis Hamilton and then on the final lap I think where was he like he was like halfway down the lap I think his tire went as well and I'm thinking this can't be true Crofty's just said it a minute ago and we thought oh he's just you know he's accidentally you know got them mixed up and then literally like what a minute later it happens to Lewis. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <sighs> and then at this point, I think, but that, but Red Bull have just pitted Max. So what are we gonna do in this situation? Like, is Max gonna come through? And the clip, the clip is what we, the clip. I can't even describe to you. You'll know exactly what I mean when you watched it. The clip of Lewis coming down the hangar straight, and then you could just see Max in his Red Bull like this at the back, going through Magnus and Beckett's. And I'm thinking, <sighs> and. I, I genuinely, I could not breathe. I can't tell you how much I couldn't breathe. Lewis Hamilton driving that Mercedes around with three wheels on it down to a club corner was the scariest thing. So I'm thinking, I know Max is 20 seconds behind, but at the same time, this, this guy is on three wheels. Like, is he going, Max could easily be there. Like, I just couldn't comprehend in my head. Everyone was screaming. All of my group chats were going absolutely off. Ping, ping, ping. Like, Twitter was going mental. I think, what is going to go on? But Lewis Hamilton eventually did cross the line and did come first. And Max Verstappen was actually quite far. Well, he wasn't quite far back, but I thought he was going to get closer than that. But he didn't. And eventually, you know, Max didn't make it. But the argument here, and I think the biggest thing here, which I don't think Red Bull are playing on it too much, but it's hindsight's an amazing thing, whatever. But if Max didn't pit, he would have won that race because he wouldn't have had that big, or Lewis wouldn't have had that big 30 second buffer but he did because Max pitted and I completely understand why Red Bull done it like I completely get why Red Bull done it I would have done it if I was in that position I'm sure Mercedes would have done that or Ferrari would have done that if they were in that position but if he didn't pit we would have seen a Red Bull win and I'm not I'm not like a massive Red Bull fan but it would have been nice to have seen someone else win but I mean to, for Lewis to win a race on three wheels is crazy but I just think the thing I'm taking from this weekend the most, and I think most people are, is these tyres. I don't know what's going on, but I can't believe the tyres degraded like this. It reminded me of Canada 2011 so, so much. It was crazy. But next weekend, it's meant to be hotter. And we've also got a softer compound because we knew that Pirelli have switched up with the two different compounds in the two different weekends of Silverstone. So that's going to be very interesting. Definitely going to be a two-stopper next week. Like, absolutely no way it's not going to be a two-stopper. But... It was an entertaining race, to say the least. I thought, you know, it's, we're just going to sit here, you know. It's going to be whatever. And then this happened. Okay, so predictions time now. And I'm going to talk you through what I predicted last week was going to happen for Silverstone. So, last week I said for qualifying, Lewis Hamilton was going to get pole. Valtteri Bottas was going to be P2. And Lando Norris was going to be P3. But um, I was very... Well, I wasn't very lot wrong. I got the first two right, Lewis, Bottas, and then Max. I kind of played it safe last week. I thought, oh, I'm just going to say the Mercedes because it is. Um, but it was Max other than Lando. But Lando still qualified very well, but Max got up there. For the race, I said Lewis Hamilton, P1, to win the race. 
Valtteri Bottas P2 and Lance Stroll in P3. And actually that racing point, I know there was only one on track, but that did not have pace. What was Lance P9, P10? Like that racing point was being overtaken by the Renaults and the McLarens and even, you know, was struggling against Pierre Gasly. I think Pierre did get him at the end. So I don't know what was going on there, but I wasn't right in that. The race was actually Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. Obviously, I wasn't going to be too far, far off if that didn't happen to Valtteri, but it did. For fastest lap, I said Carlos Sainz. I like to say the McLarens. I don't know why but it was actually Max Verstappen as we know he boxed on like this penultimate lap to get that but if not I don't know who I think Alex Albon had it before but obviously he was out of the points so I don't actually know who had it to retire first I said Daniel Kvyat but actually it wasn't it was Kevin Magnussen but Danny Kvyat did retire so technically I kind of feel like I should have half a point there because I did get one retirement right so moving on to next week I am going to give my predictions for the 70th celebration what's it even called the 70th Grand Prix the 70th the 70th anniversary of Formula One the basically round two of Silverstone so qualifying I'm going to say Lewis Hamilton for pole position I'm going to say Valtteri Bottas for P2 and Lando Norris for P3 I just I know that McLaren probably isn't quite on pace, but I'm, I'm just, I don't want to give you the same predictions every week. For the race, I am going to say Valtteri Bottas P1, Max Verstappen P2, and Alex Albon P3. I don't want to be jinxing him, but at the same time, I really want him to get a podium. And I would have said Nico Hulkenberg, but that race in points pace is absolutely diabolical. And as you probably noticed, Lewis isn't up there. Not sure why, just feeling like something might happen. Fastest lap, I'm going to go for Lando Norris. I feel like he might pull something out of the bag there, maybe, you know, have a pit stop in hand, or maybe the McLaren might just be really fast and to retire first I'm going to say Kimi Raikkonen um he did actually have an issue in the race I can't even remember what it was at this point it was just that the ending was so manic but maybe he might have an issue next week as well who knows anyway that race was thoroughly enjoyable i hope you did enjoy it too i hope you enjoyed this race review i'm not going to do these very long anymore i found that they got way too long in the last couple of weeks and i just don't really think there's any point in you sitting through them so just talking you through my key moments and what i thought was you know a little bit exciting but obviously red bull probably could have had that white win in hindsight so thank you again for watching this video if you do enjoy it please give it a thumbs up subscribe down below i have got a brand new video coming out tomorrow and i will also then have my second race review for the second race of silverstone so make sure you subscribe to be here for that so you know whether my predictions were right or wrong. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.